longest time I've been looking for a voltmeter that pulls practically no power and basically runs off of an LCD screen, like your old style wristwatches you used to have. Not these ones that always say they're LCD, but they're actually a seven segment LED display writing off numbers and everything else. They pull 15 milliamps. It's going to eventually drain a battery. I'm looking for something that runs on like a milliamp or less. I think I finally found it. They're like $10 on Amazon. You can find them on eBay as well too. But it basically looks like this. It's a battery capacity slash voltage meter. And it's a little tiny thing. I mean, it's really two finger widths and not even all the way to I mean, knuckles. So, yeah, what's that? Inch and a half by three inches or so? And it's real simple. But let's put it through its paces. It does have some configuration into it that you can actually change on it. It's a little wonky, so it's probably best I show you how this worked. Because it took me about 20 minutes to figure out how to get to all the settings in here. So let's go down to the bench. I'll show you. So here's the unit itself. It still looks a little foggy because I haven't taken the little plastic piece of protector off of it. So that's why it still looks a little foggy. But you got two switches on the front and the display, which I'll power up in a minute. And you got the setting key and the switch key. The switch key will help you change through different uh, screens on it. And on the back of it, you get this little connector with about 10 inches of wire for a positive and negative. And that's it. There's no settings inside here. Nothing that you can do a solder jumper with or really mess with. It's really easy to work with. So, let's uh, turn it back on over. Let's zoom on out. And I got a Multimeter set up over here. Hopefully the glare is not too bad. There we go. That's good. And set the milliamps so we can see how much power this pulls. Now I have it set in its default state, the way it came to me. And we're going to run it off my power supply, which is over here. So let me turn the power on. You see it powering up. Zero volts, or zero percent, and an empty screen. Right now it's set for um, lead-acid batteries. So yeah, lead-acid battery usually needs to be around at least 12 volts to see something. So... If we hit the switch button, you'll see I'm running 7.9 volts right now. So it does read. Question is, how low can it actually read? So I'm going to start adjusting the voltage in tenth of a volt increments and bring it on down and see what it does and see what the lower limit is here. 4, 7, 4, 6, 4, 5, 4, 4, 4, 3, 4, 2... Yeah, see the screen's about ready. Yeah, it's not even reading correctly now. 4, 1, and the screen was starting to fade out a little bit there. Nope, 4 volts. Okay, so about 4.5 volts is its minimum for running. So if I crank it back up to... Yep, there we go. 4, 5, and of course it resets and defaults back to percentage. So, we're at 4, 5, 4, 6, 4, 7... It does have a bit of a hysteresis to it. I'm actually at 4.8 on the meter or on my power supply. 4.9. It seems to be like about a tenth of a volt off. That's about it. Let's bring it up to 12 volts. See it count up? And here we go. We're starting to get some bars here. Telling you how much of a charge you got. And let's bring it up to 12.5. Actually, right here, I have my uh, power supply set at 12.5, and now it's reading 12.5. So it seems to get a little more accurate as you get higher in voltage. 6, 7, 12, 8. Now, if I remember, I think this thing's lead acid. It's like 12.9 is a full charge. Yeah, okay. 12.9 is considered a full charge on this. Now, at the same time, let's switch back on over. Oop, sorry, that's right. You have three button presses. One, well, wakes it up from, come on, switch on over. There we go. You get your percentage, and you get your voltage, and then you get a sleep mode that shuts it off completely, except for what? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> so, turn it back on. You're on 93, 92%, so it's almost charged. Let me bring the, uh, I have the power supply set for 12.9 right now. Let's go up to 13. You see it's starting to count up a little bit. It is a little bit slower on this, but I, that's probably a good thing. This way it doesn't record spikes. It's just meant to show you a battery capacity. 13, 1. 98. 99. 
100%. Yeah, and it'll do the same for anything going above. So if I go to the second screen, see 13.3. And we're pulling just under 3 milliamps, 2.85 roughly or so. And it hasn't really changed from 13.1 all the way down to 12 volts. You see it drop down. So it, the current is very steady on this. <clears throat> so now let's get to the settings part of this. On the description on Amazon, it actually shows me the display itself and the instructions. There's a setting key and a switch key. And I wish I can get this there. That's a little bit better. And you got five different settings. The way to get into the settings, it does tell you down here, hold the setting key while powering the tester to enter battery setting mode. Basically, to get it into battery setting mode, first you got to shut off the power and let it completely shut off. Hold down the setting key and power back on. And all of a sudden, bingo, we're right in there. P01. P means uh, lead acid batteries. I can switch if I wanted to. Yep. This screen is very wonky to get into. Hold on, let me do it again. Power down. Okay, there we go. See, now I got F, which is for lithium iron phosphate battery chemistry, or L for lithium. And back to P for lead acid batteries. Now, if I switch on over, this is how many batteries you have in series with it. So if you're working with a lithium ion or lithium iron phosphate uh, battery pack, it depends on how many cells you have. Now, when it comes to lead acid, one means a 12 volt battery, not 16. Uh, two is uh, 24, 36, 48 volts. I think that's about as much as it supports actually. So for a 12 volt lead acid battery, just leave it on P01. Now you also have five different settings that are shown with the little battery graph right here. And let's switch on over to that now. The only way you can get to it is you have to change from here over to how many cells you have go up and down at least once or so and then you can hold down the switch button for a few seconds then it gets you into these S settings S1 through S5 it's the only way you can get to it that I can that I found out so let's see if I get the right angle here S1 changes the display from voltage and percentage every two seconds automatically S2 Enter a sleep mode in 10 seconds after the display. So basically, when you hit a button to wake it up, it'll show for 10 seconds and then turn itself back off again. Third one is to turn on or off the backlight. And you can see by factory, that one is set. The bar is on. The fourth one, it says blank. It doesn't do anything, so I have no clue. And the fifth one says battery type selection. I tried setting it. It doesn't do anything. At least not that I know of. I can't find it. But the biggest thing I wanted was something that didn't run off a backlight and only pulled maybe one milliamp. So let's change to third setting and hit this button and you'll see the backlight came off and that went off. Now to save your settings, kill the power. Once the power is completely out, your settings are saved. So now when I turn the power back on, you'll see I no longer have a backlight. It's still reading the voltage. I can switch back and forth, but the biggest thing is that right there, 1.3 milliamps. That's all it pulls. And it doesn't matter if I take the voltage from 12 up to 13, or even 14 for that fact. There's 14, yeah, it did practically nothing. Or, on the other end of the spectrum, let's go 10 volts, still pulling 1.3 milliamps. You gotta love it, it's close enough. I don't think I'm gonna find anything better than this, really. And I still go to sleep mode if I want to, and then it pulls absolutely nothing, which is great. So this way I can check, not pull practically any power, and then turn it back off again. I, I love it. So down in the description below, I will have the information for Amazon and eBay and probably even AliExpress if I can find one on there, which I'm sure I probably can. I'll have links to this in case you want to go get one yourself to play with. Actually, I have a second one on order because uh, I have a feeling my next project, the big project I'm working on, I might actually want two of these screens. So I got a second one on order just as backup. So if you have any questions or comments, go ahead and leave them down below. Share the video for me, please. Thanks a lot.